The NFL draft is done and dynasty rookie drafts are underway. I'm here to give you four players that I think are great values at their current average draft position in Superflex rookie drafts right now on the sleeper app. Now, before I do that, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and then feel free to drop all of your rookie draft questions in the comments below. Let's get started. At the 205, I'm looking at Josh Downs, wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. Now, I really loved Josh Downs before the NFL draft. He was a prospect that I thought would go a little bit higher. He didn't get that round two draft capital that we really want, but he still went on day two in the third round with the 79th overall pick. Two things that stood out to me with this pick by the Indianapolis Colts. One, Shane Steichen, their new head coach, former Eagles offensive coordinator, he needs a good slot wide receiver in this offense to open up the vertical attack downfield. Think about what he was able to do with Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. Now, it may not be a simple one-for-one -one comparison here with Anthony Richardson and Josh Downs, but that slot receiver role is a bit more important than we think. Also, if you're just going to look at this from a player evaluation standpoint, the Colts love drafting big, fast, strong players. They went out of their way and out of their comfort zone zone to draft a guy that does not fit their typical mold. That means that they felt that his talent transcends their parameters for a wide receiver draft pick. And that's why I really like Josh Downs at the 205 in your rookie drafts. At the seventh pick in the second round of rookie drafts, the 207, I really like Marvin Mims, the wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. This is another guy that I really liked for his deep ball ability before the draft. And he ends up on a team with Denver with Russell Wilson, a guy who's a pretty good deep ball thrower. And he got that round two draft capital that we really like. It's a good indicator of the way a team values a player, but even more so, Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos traded up to go get him, which is an even bigger indicator of how they really value him. Now, Denver just picked up the fifth year option on Jerry Judy, and there's a very real possibility that Cortland Sutton gets moved. Those are guys that have been rumored to be on the trade block for a while. Now, Jerry Judy doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but Cortland Sutton could still be on the move. Tim Patrick is another wide receiver that's going to be coming off a torn ACL, so you don't really know what you're going to get from him. And well, KJ Hamler is a guy that I don't even know how much longer he's going to be on the team. Even if he remains in the roster, this is his last season under contract with the Broncos. So Marvin Mims could not only be going into a starting role now as a rookie, but things look really good for him in the near future. Now, here we get to the end of the second round, and at the 211, I am a big fan of Jaden Reed, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. This was a guy that was a big, big sleeper for me that I brought up on my show, the Pretend GM, multiple times in this draft process. He not only got the excellent draft capital that you want at 50th overall to Green Bay, but he walked into an offense where... He could become a starter on day one the second he steps on that field. The Packers wide receiver room is pretty bare. You're, look, you're looking at what Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, uh, Samori Toure. Like there's not a lot there. They did go and they drafted some, some tight ends. And uh, there's going to be plenty of weapons there now for Jordan Love. But it's going to be a matter of what kind of weapons and what kind of role do each of these guys fit in. Jaden Reed likely becomes the underneath target for Jordan Love and could become a target vacuum with his versatility to line up anywhere in this offense. And really, that's what you want for your quarterback. If he's going into a situation that could potentially be uncomfortable, you want to give him as many weapons that make him more comfortable. Jaden Reed is that guy that can work on a lot of those underneath routes for him. I think this pick becomes probably one of the best values in the entire rookie draft. And at the 301, I'm looking at Sam Laporta, the tight end for the Detroit Lions, came out of Iowa and the Lions drafted him with the 34th overall pick. I know that was a big surprise to a lot of people that probably thought he might be the fifth tight end off the board or lucky to even go in round two, but he nearly went in round one. He was my third ranked tight end and he goes to this high powered offense that's going to need someone to catch passes early and often in 2023. Now I get it. They went out and they got Jameer Gibbs, but we're looking at a rookie prospect here who gets the opportunity to go into that TJ Hawkinson role that's been voided. And we don't really see a lot of opportunities for tight ends to produce early in their career. Even Michael Mayer, who by many accounts was the better prospect, he's going to an offense where he's going to have to split time with someone else. Laporta doesn't have to do that. He has no competition at the tight end position and he can start immediately on day one. Now, there's something that is a big indicator of success for tight ends at the next level, and it's their relative athletic score. You're looking for tight ends that are athletic and can do a lot with the, let's call it minimal amount of targets that they get. Now, Sam Laporta had a 9.01 relative athletic score out of 10. That's a major indicator of success and not a lot of good, not a lot of tight ends, I should say, even get that high of a relative athletic score. But all the ones that produce for fantasy, 
are the athletic guys, the guys that can make plays after the catch, guys that have that good movement ability. Think about last year with Chigo Conquo, where he all of a sudden started to blossom at the end of the season. That's the kind of thing that you could see for Sam Laporta, but you could see it even earlier in the season with the Jamison Williams suspension. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not suggesting that Sam Laporta is going to be a top 10 tight end as a rookie, similar to how Kyle Pitts was. He's not on that level, but he's a guy that could produce for you early and could give you really good production throughout his career in Dynasty. If you're looking for more Dynasty content like this, just click the video to the side and you'll be able to check out all of the awesome content we've got going on this week. 